Hey, you guys. So I'm back. Alrighty, I'm back with another podcast episode slash YouTube video. Y'all already know we, you know, we done hybrided it up. So, um, Um, at any rate, um, as I was saying, um, I'm back with another podcast now. Don't get me wrong. Raven Simone is, is, she's, she's, we on, uh, she, she, I'm, I'm very critical of the, the people in my community, you know, big people and small people. Raven Simone is not on my highest list, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I will always say, you know, you can always knock the artist, but what you can't knock is their art. And, you know, that's so Raven alone, you know, without Raven's home, forget Raven's home, you know what I'm saying? It was a pivotal moment for Disney Channel. You know what I'm saying? Moment. And I'm talking about for the whole entire franchise. You know what I'm saying? So, um... Give me just a second. I'm sorry. Uh, <sighs> Alrighty. So, yeah, at any rate, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, it, it was pivotal for Disney Channel, period. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, you know, forget Disney Channel. You know what I'm saying? That was pivotal for, you know, all the all the black girls growing up. You know what I'm saying? Watching Disney. Yeah, we had Lizzie McGuire and Eva Stevens. and Not even just black girls, black people in general. You know what I'm saying? Because you got Eddie and Corey. You know, you got Victor. You got a whole bunch of black people. You know what I'm saying? And, and representation, it's very important. It matters. It helps. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it sucks that we're so scarce and that nowadays, the only times we can really see ourselves... You know, other than Blackish and some of these other shows on the come up is in reality TV. And that's not the best light that we can see ourselves in. You know what I'm saying? Um, but nonetheless, like I was saying, um, Raven, not my favorite artist, but the art that is that so Raven is definitely worth, you know, giving props. So um, at any rate. Raven's Home is coming back for a second season. <clears throat> the first season had, if I'm not mistaken, 13 episodes. Me and my mom watched a few um, together. I watched a few with some of my friends and stuff. Overall, we liked the show. You know what I'm saying? If I, comp- if I could um, compare and contrast, I, um, I-, I felt that that So Raven had more of an, uh, an ethnic feel. I liked that, you know, more. You know what I'm saying? It felt like, you know... Uh, it felt, it felt, I, I can't really explain it. It just, I, I like the, the, the feeling of watching and being like, I can see this happening to me. You know what I'm saying? This could be me. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was just natural. It was black girl magic. You know what I'm saying? That's what I, that, that feeling is, that's just what the feeling, um, that that's a Raven gave me. You know what I'm saying? And how, you know what I'm saying? Even from, you know, the way that Raven wore her hair back then, you know what I'm saying? You you seen the micro braids, just like Brandy and Moesha, you know what I'm saying? Like, the show was just, it was, it was so black. <laughs> like, it was, it was amazingly black. And I watch it more, you know, knowing, noticing now, you know what I'm saying? In this age, I've noticed more, of course, than when I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? But it just goes to show you representation matters, you know what I'm saying? They up here saying, you know, you know, using, you know, our slang, you know what I'm saying, all, all the slang that we had back in the 2000s, you know, when that story was coming on, you know what I'm saying, it was in there, you know what I'm saying, they didn't shy away from the Ebonics, you know what I'm saying, 
Um, they talked about real stuff. They talked about when the white lady discriminated against Raven when she was trying to have the job. You know what I'm saying? So it just, it did a lot. It did a lot for the black community um, and for Disney Channel. You know what I'm saying? So I was definitely, you know, that's a Raven, in my opinion, is the number one Disney show. You know what I'm saying? Everything else can fall after. That's up to y'all to decide. But that's a Raven will forever, to me, be the number one Disney Channel show. So, um, at any rate, um, I like the Ravens home, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was still felt like I was watching Raven to an extent. Now this is Raven Simone of now. And I can tell that she, I get the vibe that she has, um, which it would make sense. You know, the show revolves around her name, literally, you know what I'm saying? And I get the vibe that she has, um, a lot of more producer say, in this, you know, reinstallment of the show, you know what I'm saying? The little urban white girl, I could do it without, without her. I ain't gonna lie, cause she she do a little too much, you know what I'm saying? But this is Raven, Raven the Republican, Raven the, you know, born in every continent except for Africa, you know. What I'm saying? So I'm not surprised, you know what I'm saying? The little urban white girl, I could do without her. She do a little too much, but other than her, you know what I'm saying? Overall, the show was fine. You know what I'm saying? Raven and Chelsea still, you know what I'm saying? The same. They still tight. Um, I liked it. I liked it. You know what I'm saying? So I was definitely wondering, you know what I'm saying? Like season, the last episode was the 13th episode and I think it was Halloween theme. So it came on like last year. So I was kind of like, uh, is it going to come back on or not? Is it coming back? What the hell? So um, it is coming back, which is great news. So, um, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, just that's a Raven. It was so monumental. You know what I'm saying? I don't think people understood. You know what I'm saying? Like it was an international hit, even without the translation. You know what I'm saying? TV viewers around the world enjoyed her performances. That was Disney's first multi cam sitcom and it ran for a hundred episodes and it became the network's most highest rated shows of that time. And based on what came on after that's a raven, I'm willing to bet you it still might be. You know what I'm saying? So don't don't sleep on that so raven. You know what I'm saying? Raven Simone, that's a little different from that's from, from that's a raven. You know, raven Baxter, Raven Simone, not the same people. Not not anymore. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with some Raven Baxter all day long. You know what I'm saying? Um but I'm definitely looking forward to the second season of the show. Um, I'm ready for both of them to tell each other that they damn psychic. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited for the show. Even the, um, let's see, people always talk about Lizzie McGuire and even Stevens. And those were great shows that got us a lot of attention, Bonnet says. But it wasn't until that So Raven came on that we really exploded. You know what I'm saying? And that's Adam Bennett. Or Bonnet, I think I want to say. Oh, it's a, oh, well, Bonnet, hell. Disney's executive vice president of original programming. So if anybody has to say, and what show was popping, it'll be him. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, Simone grew up on 1990s sitcoms, The Cosby Show, and Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Um, but her career has been sandwiched by Disney the network that allowed her to make history as the first African-American woman with her name in the title of a TV comedy series. So, you know what I'm saying? That just, just, it's a big thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely glad the show's come back for a second season. And, um, even though, even without that, so even, you know, or even without this, you know, her post, um, resume is, it's still impressive. You know, she starred in ABC's Family's um, the state of Georgia and she showcased her, showcased her powerful voice on Broadway in 2012's Sister Act before becoming a controversial host. We all know about that. Um, and that's another thing too I want to shout, uh, shout out to Raven. Her voice. Her voice is fucking amazing. That's one of the most slept on Disney Channel artists ever. You know what I'm saying? I like it, 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 I like, and I'm saying this sarcastic. I like how, you know, Disney has always tried to make these little white pop bitches. You know what I'm saying? These were making these little white bitches, you know, and pop stars. I don't know what. Y'all were sleeping on Raven because that, that vocal range is insane. 
Um, but yeah, at any rate, um, here is a quote from her. There is a place in your life where you can be uncomfortably comfortable. She says in a conference room of the Raven Raven's home set in Hollywood. Um, <laughs> yep, she's for the executive producer. There we go. All right, so she's executive producer of Raven's Home. All right, see, there we go. I knew she had a little twitch on it because this little urban ass white girl, I knew they had to be Raven. At any rate, um, she talks about being an executive producer. You know, she says, when you learn to get on a tightrope, you're not just going to jump up on the tallest building. Um, she said, or she says, you're going to start a little bit low to the ground so you have a net to catch you. I'm continuously having to make choices that I didn't have to make before in a place where I know that if I fall, there's somewhere there to catch me. Even though she's never had a completely follow period, there was a time when Simone considered herself retired. It was after her time on Broadway starring in Sister Act, the music adaptation of the hit film, musical adaptation of the hit film that starred Whoopi Goldberg. And before it joined, she joined Goldberg. <sighs> oh, sorry, sorry. Before she joined Goldberg, who produced the stage production as a co-host on The View, she had no interest in returning to showbiz. Here's a quote. I actually didn't want to do anything because the entertainment industry will drain you and then spit you out if you're not what they want and then leave you for dead, Simone says before abruptly letting out a laugh. Yet, here she is. There was no big Raven's Home hoopla, no big comeback story with the first season. After a conversation with Disney executives, Simone simply resigned from The View, packed her bags in New York, and came home. Her team even referred to the new show as Raven's Home before they had an official title for it. At Disney, Simone is judged by her performance, her professionalism, and her work ethic, not by the controversy in her past. All right, now, hold the hell up, because past is not no damn two years ago, okay? All right, now, let's not do this now, Disney. Los Angeles Times, whoever wrote this shit. For most of her career, Simone was extremely private about her personal life, but faced backlash after a 2014 interview with Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Bitch. Ah! Here we go. In which she confirmed that she was in a happy relationship with a woman who didn't want to be labeled gay and also didn't want to be labeled African American. Uh, more controversial statements followed on The View, particularly about race. We all know this shit. You know, she, she placed the blame on a student for having her cell phone out. Um, she talked more openly about her sexuality, uh, in 2016 on the show, in an episode, it got better, that we all know, um, and, uh, we all know the shit that she didn't say a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying, I will give props to Disney, though, for all the controversial shit she said, you know what I'm saying, even in the fact of her being a gay black woman, you know what I'm saying? They still have opened her with welcoming arms. So that's good. That's good. I, I will say that. You know what I'm saying? Raven, you, you fuck some stuff up sometimes with your mouth when you open your damn mouth. I will say that. But um, definitely shout out to her for, you know what I'm saying, bringing back, <sighs> giving us, oh, sorry, giving us those that so Raven feels. And shout out to her for doing it right, cause I I ain't gonna lie, the reboot it, it pretty much it pretty much mirrored the um that's a Raven to me, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't too. I know this is seemed to be the um this in 2017, 2018, 2000, you know, it's just seemed to be these last few years seem to be the years of reboots, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how many times I got to watch Bobby Brown in New Edition, the New Edition, the three part 
um, series on BT. I like that. But I don't know how many biopics. Uh, I, I don't need all these biopics of Bobby Brown and, uh, or, or Whitney Houston. Not Bobby Brown because he's still alive. But, you know, Whitney Houston. I, I don't need to see but so many of these th- things. You know what I'm saying? So I will give her props for doing a reboot properly. You know what I'm saying? But at any rate... You know, um, let me know what y'all think down below. Will y'all be checking out for Raven's Home Season 2? You know, have you not watched Season 1? You know what I'm saying? And I will catch y'all on the next podcast. Bye.